Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well, and I do hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Now, on Friday morning was crooked, quasi quatang budget, really beautifully exposed by Labour. Well, I'm talking about the Shadow Chancellor, Rachel Reeve, who didn't waste any time in tearing into giggling quasi quatang's comprehensive demolition emergency budget. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Speaker. I would like to welcome the Right Honourable Gentleman to his place. Can I thank the Chancellor on his comprehensive demolition of the record of the last 12 years? Their record, their failure, their vicious circle of stagnation. The Chancellor has confirmed that the costs of the energy price cap will be funded by borrowing, leaving the eye-watering windfall profits of the energy giants untaxed. The oil and gas producers will be toasting the Chancellor in the boardrooms as we speak, while working people are left to pick up the bill. Borrowing higher than it needs to be, just as interest rates rise. And yet the Chancellor refuses to allow independent economic forecasts to be published, which would show the impact of this borrowing on our public finances, on growth and on inflation. It is a budget without figures, a menu without prices. Speaker, what has the Chancellor got to hide? This statement is an admission of 12 years of economic failure. And now here we are, one last throw of the dice, one last claim that these ministers will be different. (laughs) For all the chopping and changing, all the chaos and confusion, there has been one person there throughout, the Prime Minister. She's been a minister for a decade and defended every single economic decision. So when the Prime Minister says she wants to break free from the past, What she really means to say is that she wants to break free from her own failed record. Because where have the last 12 years left us? Lower growth, lower investment, lower productivity. And today we learn that we have the lowest consumer confidence since records began. The only things that are going up are inflation, interest rates and bankers' bonuses. And borrowing. As as the Tories become more and more detached from reality, millions of people, millions of our constituents, are lying awake at night, worried about how they're going to make ends meet. Labour won the argument that action on energy bills was necessary. But the question is, the question is, who pays? The energy producers who have profited so much from the rises in prices should make a contribution. But when the country asked who should fit the bill for their energy rescue package, the Conservatives responded, you, the British people. Instead of standing up for working people, the Conservatives chose to shield the gigantic windfall profits of the energy giants, leaving tens of billions of pounds on the table and pushing all of the costs onto government borrowing, to be paid for by current and future taxpayers. The Prime Minister and Chancellor have no regard for taxpayers' interests or for the concerns of working people. It's not just the Conservative Party is not working for ordinary families, it is actively working against them. Mr Speaker, we have had six so-called plans for growth from the Conservatives since 2010. Here they are, Mr Speaker, a litany of failure, every single one of them. Now, I do at least commend the Chancellor on having the ambition of achieving 2.5% growth a year, the last Labour government's rate of economic growth. But to achieve that sort of growth, and for that sort of growth to be sustainable, you need a credible plan. And the truth is that this government does not have one. The Prime Minister and Chancellor are like two desperate gamblers in a casino, chasing a losing run. The argument peddled by the Chancellor today isn't a great new idea or a game-changer, as the Minister said, as much as he'd like us to think so. 
what this plan adds up to is to keep corporation tax where it is today and take national insurance contributions back to where they were in March. Yeah. Some that's new, new plan. New new and it's all based. It's all based on an outdated ideology that says if we simply reward those who are already wealthy, the whole of society will benefit. Yeah. Yeah. They've decided to replace levelling up with trickle down. Yeah. 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 As President Biden said this week, he is sick and tired of trickle down economics. And he is right to be. Yeah. Yeah. It is discredited, it is inadequate, and it will not unleash the wave of investment that we need. Mr. Speaker, it is not just those on this side of the House who have these concerns. The right honourable member for Surrey Heath described the Prime Minister's economic plans as taking a holiday from reality. The right honourable member for Richmond, that was two chancellors ago, was perhaps, perhaps too honest with his party. He said, we have tried having a low corporation tax as a means of getting business to invest, but that it has not worked. Yeah, yeah. Now, the new Chancellor and the new Prime Minister used to agree with that. Indeed, they voted for it. <laughs> Labour supported it too. Members opposite might have changed their minds, but we have not. No. No. Because the evidence shows that low rates of corporation tax are not the best way to boost investment and productivity. Yeah. And the Tories' own record shows that. Britain has the lowest headline rate of corporation tax in the G7, but we also have the lowest rate of business investment in the G7. That's why Labour would do what businesses are actually asking for, using targeted investment allowances to boost productivity and growth, and scrapping outdated and unfair business rates that harm our high streets and small businesses, replacing them with a system that's fit for the 21st century. And what about their other policies? Let's take the so-called investment zones. Again, these are nothing new. Every time they were tried, all they have achieved was moving growth around the country, not creating it. The best way out of the high-tax, low-growth spiral that the Conservatives have created is to get the economy firing on all cylinders in all parts of the country. It's going to take much more much more than a stamp duty cut to get our country back on track. And home ownership back to the levels last seen under a Labour government. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now, these stamp duty changes have been tried before. Last time the government did it, a third of the people who benefited were buying a second home, a third home, or a buy-to-let property. Is that really the best use of taxpayers' money? when borrowing and debt are already so high. And can the Chancellor confirm today how much of this stamp duty cut will go to those purchasing multiple properties? Yeah. Instead of stamp duties going up and down like a yo-yo, we need to get building, we need to target support at first-time buyers and tackle the issue of homes being sold to overseas investors. Yeah. The Chancellor has made clear who his priorities are today. Not a plan for growth, a plan to reward the already wealthy. A return to the trickle-down of the past, back to the future, not a brave new era. The Chancellor and Prime Minister proclaimed in Britannia Unchained that the British are among the worst idlers in the world. And to prove that they mean it, instead of supporting working people, this government is cutting their rights at work. Working people are the backbone of Britain and they should be respected, not sneered at. Labour will always stand up for their rights. Mr Speaker, the Chancellor has in effect today admitted he has broken his own fiscal rules. This is now the tenth time that the Tories have broken their own fiscal rules. Something I'm sure that the Office for Budget Responsibility would have confirmed if they had been allowed to publish their forecasts today. Mr Speaker, it is unprecedented to have a fiscal statement of this scale with no independent forecasts from the Office for Budget Responsibility. 
Never has a government borrowed so much and explained so little. Economic institutions matter. Yet this government has undermined the Bank of England, sacked the respected permanent secretary at the Treasury, and silenced the Office for Budget Responsibility. This is no way to build confidence. This is no way to build economic growth. Mr Speaker, Labour believes in wealth creation. We will always support enterprise, creativity and hard work. We want British business to grow, to be successful and to contribute to our country's prosperity. What we don't believe, as the Chancellor and Prime Minister do, is that British workers are idlers. We understand that it is the workers who turn up every day to make a great product at a factory or deliver a great service in the store who generate growth. It is the teachers giving the young people the skills they need, the doctors and nurses keeping people well, the entrepreneur taking a personal risk to start a new business. These are the people who generate growth and they all deserve to share in it too. Mr Speaker, this statement is more than a clash of policies. It is a clash of ideas, two different ideas about how our country prospers. If you are a pensioner worried about the cost of living, a working family see your mortgage rate going up, a small business whose costs are spiralling, the government's announcements today do little to reassure them. Bigger bonuses for bankers, huge profits for energy giants, shamelessly shielded by Downing Street, And all the while, ministers pile the crushing weight of all of these costs onto the backs of taxpayers. The value of sterling sterling has fallen. We can see it. Half his colleagues suspect it. And financial markets know it. The verdict is clear. (coughs) When it comes to the economy, this Tory leadership do not know what they are doing. The Conservatives cannot solve the cost of living crisis. The Conservatives are the cost of living crisis. And our country cannot afford them any more. Great way to start off there. A congratulation of the comprehensive demolition of the last Tory government. (laughs) <laughs> the last decade and the look of Liz Truss's face was very telling, wasn't it? Especially with the team movement and giggling, quasi quatan reenactment of his giggling at the Queen's State funeral. That was just priceless. Can I thank the Chancellor on his comprehensive demolition of the record of the last 12 years? <laughs> their record, their failure, their vicious circle of stagnation. I feel sorry for the kids, really. You know, future kids as well, who will have to pay for all this borrowing and letting the super rich off scot-free. I just think it's absolutely scandalous. And Dizzy Lizzy's facial expressions, you know, were priceless and all. Shows you how disingenuous she is because it just spoke volumes of what, what type of person she is when she were called out on this. Borrowing higher than it needs to be, just as interest rates rise. And yet the Chancellor refuses to allow independent economic forecasts to be published, which would show the impact of this borrowing on our public finances, on growth. But what do you guys think? Was crooked quasi quartan really beautifully exposed by Labour? What do you think? I shall leave the video here. Until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and take care.